Hey everybody, how's it going? So another quick tip tonight, uh, using an idea maker. Uh, this one will actually apply to whatever slicer you might be using. Uh, these are two simple little features to improve your surface quality. If you're fighting zits and blobs and stringing across your parts uh, and sort of suffering with some surface quality issues, then these two little features will help immensely uh, in your challenges. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, um, and uh, we'll, you'll get more videos like this one. Um, so again, uh, let's let's talk about this. Let's jump in. So this is a simple little test part. Um, I've got a couple little holes in it here and there, and what I have turned on are our travel moves, our attractions, and our seams. So all the white dots are layer start points. Um, the blue lines are travel moves, right? So at the at the end of one line, it's going to move to the start of a new one. And any time it's running across these open areas, you can see here it's running across this big open area. Uh, it's running through these holes. You've got a bunch of moves through these holes right there. Those are potential areas that's going to leave stringing. So if you don't have this new roll of filament completely dialed in from a heat and retraction perspective, um, you have the potential there to have poor surface finish because it's basically just going to be dragging or, or oozing, you know, material across your parts and it's kind of a pain. So let's just dive into it. Here's the two little things. Uh, we're going to start first with um, one feature that's not real apparent. So we're going to go into your main slicing template. We're going to hit edit and we're going to focus on this ooze tab. And the feature we're going to tackle is this avoid traveling through holes. And so it's not self-explanatory. Um, like in, in Kira, they call this combing. I think in Slick 3R and, and maybe even in like S3D, they call this uh, stay inside perimeter. Um, and essentially what you're telling the software to do is only put the nozzle, only move the nozzle around the, the, the area of the part that's already printed, right? Don't move outside the perimeter, comb inside the part, you know, good, all that good stuff. So ticking that one little box, hitting OK and slicing. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit the preview one more time. And I always like to turn on travels, retractions, and seams. So you can see we still have our start points all over the place here, and we'll tackle that one in just a second. Uh, but now you can see a difference in how the travels are, are happening, right? So this is the, the big, the big uh, uh, tool and toolbox related to reducing strain and, and um, uh, some of the zits and blobs on your part. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, and so as you roll up and down the part here, each layer you can tell all the blue lines are staying within the part. We have no more travels through the holes. You actually have travel paths that are, that are doing a, uh, a radial motion around the hole to get to the start point. So no more traveling through. And it is considering this big sort of open area between these two features a hole in this case, right? So it's keeping the, the nozzle within the printed area. So that's a big, that's gonna be a big, big uh, improvement in surface quality finish, uh, guaranteed. Um, next one being is all of your start points. So now why don't we get into, um, you know, another, another real easy play on, on improving surface quality is telling the software where to start and stop your layers. So if we go to the slice again, we hit edit on our, on our main template here, whatever template that you're using. And we talk about this layer tab and down here, this layer start point. So by default, with a lot of the, 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 the default templates, it's, it's either on random or it's on nearest things like that. Uh, what you want to try and do in this case is do a fixed location. I've specified uh, 110 on the X, so that's the middle of my bed, and 220 on the Y, so all the way in the back. And so you're trying to give it a position based on the size of your printer bed. Now, I've got an Ender 3, so I'm 220 by 220 by 250, right? So I'm basically saying middle of the X, back of the Y, that's where I want you to try and place my seam on the part. And again, it's a try. It's not, uh, unfortunately, it's not perfect. I really wish there was a, a tad bit finer control with the software. So when I say put it here, it's putting it there, wherever, you know, and it's, eh, I say that now, I'm going to have to backtrack on it because it's not always going to be possible. Um, with those holes in the part and things like that, it's just not. But you're giving it a, a pretty good solid location where you want it to hit. And so the, the benefit here is even though it might not get it exactly on that XY coordinate, it's going to put it in about the same place almost every time. So if you do have areas with zits and blobs and things like that, you won't have much stringing now because we've already fixed that other issue. Um, but if you do have some cleanup to do on your Z seam, well, now it's all in one location. It's not scattered all around the part. So if we hit OK here and we hit Slice, and again, we'll go to the preview and we'll tick on travels, retractions, and seams. You can see now all the little white dots, start points are gone from the front and the sides of the part. 
here's our two holes that we have on the part. There's a Z seam running up and down. Uh, and if you and if you think about each one relative to the position that I told it to put it in, 110 by 220, if you talk about this hole, well, that's as close as it can get to that X and Y location. Same here, that's as close as it can get to that X and Y location. Now, if we go around to the back, it's gonna put it in this location. So, you know, again, it's trying to get there. Uh, it's 110, right? It's the middle of the X, that's probably the closest point to the middle of the bed, probably within a millimeter or two, right? It's putting it there and it's all the way in the back of the park. Uh, there's maybe one or two here on this corner that it's trying to that it has to put in for whatever reason it needs to um, But for the most part it's placing the seam all in that one location. So if I do have any cleanup, it's super easy to to uh, to handle it um, The other option this is like a, a, a So those two things those are the two things I really wanted to cover there is an optional one that if you do have sort of a more Geometrically co complex part with maybe lots of corners and inside and outside corners uh, you can also then tell it to do auto. You can specify a relative location, and then you can say, well now, and then place it on either a reflex or a convex corner, or, or a reflex or a convex corner, right? So if it's an outside corner or an inside corner, it will do its best to hide it on one of those corners. So those are your options there too. We're not gonna notice a big change in the slice because the part's not very complex. Probably gonna be exactly the same, but uh, those are your options, again, Preview, preview, preview. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm sure you all get tired of me saying it. Preview, preview, but it is the same in this in this particular scenario. Um, and if you have, you know, a more complex part, always always look at the preview. There's no reason not to look at the preview. You can just do it for a second. Um, but you can still see here that all of those, even with both of those options enabled, all of our travel moves are still within the part. So. There you go. There's your two quick little tips. Again, like and subscribe. Uh, and we'll, like always, we'll do more of these. Uh, thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.